Welcome back to the Sunbelt Social Suite. Joining me now is Arkansas State Head Coach Blake Anderson. Coach, thanks for stopping by. No, we're just kind of getting things started here with Media Day, but what's your schedule been like so far? I really just walked through the door. You're the, you're the first one for the day. So we want to start uh, in here and get a little social media working before we hit all the other stops. All right. Well, since this is all about social media, how active are you on social media? Very, very. Me and my entire staff, uh, we use it uh, a ton for recruiting. We use it a ton for staying uh, connected with our fan base. Um, you know, it's uh, it's something that the young guys on my staff got me doing a few years ago, and it's it's really become a huge tool for us, whether it be uh, to communicate directly with the recruits through DM or just to put out information about the, the you know, the, the brand and what we're doing, from videos to graphics to just information. And, and we use it all the time. It's a huge tool for us. I know you certainly are very active and put a lot of information out there, especially the hashtag building a monster. Yeah. Tell us about what that is about and about the branding behind that. When we took the job, just me and a few guys in the room, and uh, it, it kind of we kind of fell into it in the in the process of talking to a couple of recruits. We we wanted them to know that our our goal and our vision for what we're going to do is to to compete to be the best football program and the best you know athletic department, honestly, in the group of five. That's the division we're in. It's where we're at right now, and the group group of five, elite five, whatever you want to call it. We want to be the best, and so we want to build a monster program. We want to. We want to think above and beyond even the conference at this point because it's just it's never been done there before and we wanted to create that vision and, and we, we keep throwing that out there and our guys understand what that means now and as we deal with the recruits and the fan base they understand that's our expectation too and now it's something we all can kind of rally around and, and we're, we're working every day to get that done. Well speaking of building there's also a construction project going on in Jonesboro building onto Centennial Bank Stadium uh, seeing the progress of that how's it looking and what does that add for you guys as a program? We just opened up brand new indoor, uh, and it uh, a lot of recruits just here recently had a chance to see it for the first time, and just uh, it's it's a f phenomenal facility. the The expansion project is really more for the fan base. You know, we 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 play on the field. We're not going to be up in the luxury boxes, but the fan base has held this thing together through all the coaches, all the transitions, tough times at times to get us to this point, and and we felt like the fan experience needed to be better. Uh, we wanted to make it, uh, you know, more of a more of a exciting environment more of a luxury environment also more attracted uh, attractive to uh, media we want we want tv games we want it to be a place where people want to come and so that thing's going to be christened september 12th against missouri nonetheless right down the road in the sec uh, and it looks great you know there's a next phase there's a new complex to come next which will give us the facilities we need to continue to train and uh, larger weight room locker room more for the guys themselves but uh, what we're doing right now is all about the fan base and, and you know the red wolf family well, and that fan base is a pretty powerful one. Yeah, yeah. I had the chance to go to Jonesboro this past year, my first time there, and I can't say that there's much like going to an Arkansas State home game. What is it about that fan base that, that makes them such a great tool for you guys being really that 12th man? You know, they, they really have rallied around all the, the chaos and the transition and, and, and held things together. When you drive through downtown and every storefront is painted, you know, Arkansas State. And a lot of places you go and you got different high schools competing against each other. And what we found is the city and the community around Jonesboro has rallied around Arkansas State. And they've held it together. We, we pack the stadium every week. Ticket sales are higher than they've ever been at this point during the year. The funding that we needed to build the facilities, that's come from local money. That's come from in-state and alumni. I mean, they're, they're doing everything they need to do to help us do exactly what we want to, which is build a monster program, both physically and then, you know, just the reputation of the, of the program itself. Talking about selling tickets, you've got a, a special campaign that's been going on that you've been helping out with. Tell us a little bit about this uh, 10K. First and 10K. You know, we uh, we sold, I think, somewhere between uh, 8,500 and, and 8,700 tickets last year, somewhere in that range. And, you know, we just started talking. 10,000 season tickets is, is very obtainable where we're at. We've got... We've got a population in the area of around 100,000. We've got 16,000 students, and we've got you know Arkansas State alumni and, and fans all over everywhere. And it just seems this is the time. This is the time to take the next step. I told everybody that had a season ticket, go buy another one. And a lot of people are doing that. And we, we want to get to 10,000. And that's very obtainable, and it should be done. That That's the... That's where that's where the next step is for us, and so I've gotten involved. I'm, I'm about to also launch a, a scavenger hunt. I bought season tickets that I'm going to give away to two lucky fans. I'm going to do a scavenger hunt over the next month, and they're going to be able to go around town and, and look at clues. And somebody's going to win two season tickets, and I hope that somebody's never been to a game before. 
Fantastic. We've got a couple of questions to get to from Twitter before we let you go. Thomas K on Twitter asked, if you could tell last year's Blake Anderson something about being an FBS head coach, what would it be? I'd have told him to hold on for dear life. There's no way to prepare for it. Had a blast, chaotic at times, exciting at times, highs and lows, uh, wouldn't want to do anything else. Uh, but just uh, enjoy the ride and, and, you know, I guess probably as a young guy, just be willing to take a deep breath and sit back and, and not feel like you have to have the right answer right then. Just let it let it kind of uh, simmer a little bit and, and then think a little bit later. My red hair and my temper sometimes get the best of me and I've learned to slow down a little bit at times and, and just let things kind of uh, come to more of a control and, and then make a decision and I think that's going to serve me better sometimes. Now we've also got a question from Coach Satterfield who was just in here oh, with okay. us. And Coach Satterfield was at this coach's clinic yesterday yeah. out in the 97-degree heat here in New Orleans and wanted to ask, Where was I? Where were you? Well, I was building a monster. <laughs> uh, we, had, uh, we had a camp yesterday with 300 kids there in Jonesboro. That was scheduled way before the clinic was. We also had a huge recruiting day on Saturday. We've, uh, we've been real fortunate. We, we were able to roll in 10 commitments over in the last 24 hours. It was a huge weekend. And we had a team camp as well. So we, we had a big weekend planned. It just it bumped into the clinic here. I would have loved to have been working with the kids, to be honest with you. Just so in case he didn't know, it was about 105 where I was. So I was just <laughs> as hot and just as sweaty. And I, I rolled in last night about 1.30 in the morning to get here. So uh, we were both busy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad Coach Satterfield's checking in on me. I'll make sure to tell him yeah. that you passed <laughs> all right well since we asked coach Satterfield in the last seg segment we're going to ask you as well we've got uh Mark Hudspeth coming in here next yeah. and so if you had the opportunity what would you ask coach Hudspeth I'd ask coach Hudspeth how he uh how he gets all those muscles to pop out just below his earlobes and all through his chest and still coach football on a daily basis. Well, somehow he makes it work, but he's certainly a sight to see. Yeah, yes, he does. Yes, he does. <laughs> all right, Coach Anderson, we are going to look at a couple of uh, video clips okay. because we had a certain play that received no what you're a lot of exposure last year. Tell us about the fainting, fainting goat. goat. The fainting goat goes back several years, to be honest with you. It started with a practical joke. We played on my quarterback, Bryn Renner, back at North Carolina. We had, I'd accused him of fainting at, at the, at, uh, in front of a big defender one time. It turned into the fainting goat because there are goats that actually do faint when they're surprised. We had this fake punt scheduled and planned. We had nothing for Booker Mays to do because he was, he was covered up. He couldn't go downfield. And we're standing there talking about what do we have him do. And my special teams coordinator, Luke Pascal, was with me at Carolina. He said, man, we just, we just have him do the fainting goat. I think they thought I would say no. I said, that's absolutely, that's great. Let's do it. We started working it. Booker Mays has got a great personality. He absolutely loved it. We built it up to be a big, a big deal. I don't think anybody truly knew what to expect. The play should have worked. We underthrew it and it got intercepted. That would have made it a lot better. But, uh, you know, we're willing to laugh and have a good time. We talk all the time about having fun and finding ways to break the monotony and the chaos. I mean, we work so hard that you've got to find some lightness in it. And that was a great opportunity. I had no way to know that it was going to blow up and get the national attention that it did. It was not even the intent. It was just to have a good time with our guys. Now, it turned out great. We got a lot of people looking our way that normally wouldn't. And if they want to keep watching, I promise you there's more where that came from. Well, we have another picture of another viral photo yeah. that went around. Clark Griswold, we've actually got Darian coming in, joining us a little yes, bit yes, later. Yes, what a coincidence and someone who was smart enough to capture a photo and once again arkansas state was out there for everyone to see yeah now i had nothing to do with those two good <laughs> stand, guys standing i wish i was smart enough to tell you i could have coordinated that but <laughs> it just so happens uh jamar clark's our left tackle and grizz and we don't huddle so i think it was maybe even towards the media timeout where they happen to be standing next to each other because normally grizz would be running to get lined up and I was surprised. I saw that on social media as soon as I came off the field and somebody hit that. I can't remember who put it out there, but it was, we, we had a lot of fun with it. Absolutely. Well, Coach, we certainly appreciate you stopping by. It's been a pleasure catching up with you as well. We hope that you enjoy the rest of your day as you get out there and speak with everyone else. Enjoy your time in New Orleans. I'll do it. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much, Coach. When we get back, as we mentioned, we will have Louisiana Lafayette head coach Mark Hudspeth stopping by here in the social suite.